Right, hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, today let's talk about uh, Juni Agent, uh, which is um, AI agent for coding uh, that's built in uh, IntelliJ. So a couple things about um, all that AI um, uh, hype. Um, I tried to use uh, Cursor multiple times, uh, but uh, I wasn't really happy because I had to switch to a different um, IDE. So I'm not really used to VS Code. Um, so I wasn't really enjoying much, uh, to be honest, because uh, I was waiting for a native support, basically for tool like that, inside my um, my main editor, which is uh, IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, and uh, finally, we, I have something that I uh, can use inside the editor without any hacks. Um, and uh, there's a lot of uh, effort, I believe, uh, that uh, JetBrains putting in in Juni. So I hope it will uh, uh, evolve and catch up with all the features. So today I'm going to show you a couple of use cases, uh, how that how that looks, uh, and how I use that. Uh, but um, overall, I was uh, really impressed, and the quality of code uh, was quite nice. Uh, a lot of things could be automated, so your boring tasks, you can just ask the agent now to do them. Um, and yeah, pretty good. Even for, I tried that for Closure Code, uh, which is quite niche, but uh, still uh, got pretty decent results. And I think I'll be using that more um, as like, you know, a pairing comp uh, companion, companion uh, in my coding sessions. So first of all, uh, let's uh, let's go to here, and um, this one will be a demonstration of a boring task to upgrade some dependencies. So here I have my uh, closure service template that's uh, available publicly in GitHub. Um, so you can use that as your starter for closure service. Inside, I'm using the plugin right here to. Uh, keep the versions uh, up to date and also there is a github actions uh, to run that uh, daily uh, and to report in case there are any updated outdated dependencies so if we go to um, terminal uh, you can run command uh, bb app antique uh, and it will show the report of the current and latest versions so before that, I will just go through this list and update things manually. Uh, but let's try asking to do that, uh, the Juni agent. Basically, you have this new tab right here. Uh, you click on that um, and you see this window where you, can, um, where you can ask your agent to do things for you. So let's say uh, run uh, BB app antique and and use the list of outdated dependencies and update them. Um, once done, validate again. So let's run this. Uh, probably not the best prompt, but we'll see if, uh, if it will work. I'm trying this first time. Before that, I just run uh, that command locally and then use that as part of the, the prompt. Uh, but it, it, you see, if there is a, a command that uh, agent needs to run, it will ask you to confirmation to allow to run command. There's also a brave mode uh, when you run your initial query, uh, basically allowing the, the agent to run any commands it wants uh, without approval. And uh, also here you can go to open and it will show you the uh, output from the Juni terminal. So I think it got the uh, list of dependencies. Now it will uh, try read the project CLJ file and uh, will go one by one updating the dependencies.
So yeah, right here we can see uh, the changes that were made and we can click here and we'll immediately go to the div, which is quite handy. I think uh, if you use IntelliJ, you're used to this Git uh, div, which is quite nice. So this is updated. Uh, now we can, it's trying to run same command uh, as I ask to validate at the end. But I think usually, uh, usually after the task, uh, the agent is trying to validate somehow. If that's a, there is a code change, it will try to figure out how to run tests in your project. Um, so yeah, uh, it says all updated dependencies are okay. Uh, so that's good. Uh, we can now see some changes here. And just let's run the same command uh, manually, uh, just to double check there is no, uh, no issues. And yeah, as you can see, all dependencies are up to date. Obviously, in, um, in real app, after updating dependency, you want to run tests, etc. But you can ask the agent to do that. And if there are any test failures, you can ask to, to fix them as well. Usually, that works pretty well. So that was the, the first example. Um, let's move to the next one. And here we have... I have a project called uh, Startup Fellows that I'm supporting for many years. Um, it's basically a, a website, uh, sorry for the uh, Kyrillic, but uh, it's for for that region. Um, you basically can post some job descriptions there in your, if you find, so if you're trying to find a co-founder for your startup or something like that. You, you can uh, post a job and then you can post uh, that you're available and then you try the, this uh, thing is trying to match you and uh, um, you can you can collaborate on the project but basically it's written in closure uh, I was using that as a hobby project for a, for a long time to try new things and practice closure when I was learning that uh, one of the things I was doing here uh, there was a namespace to send uh, some emails and it was using the uh, Selma uh, library to do some HTML rendering and as it was just used in that, uh, that place um, um, I didn't really want to keep an extra dependency so I just wanted to rewrite that in you know some simple string concatenation and formatting uh, and remove the dependency. Uh, uh, so yeah, I basically made that with a Juni. Um, here you need to be careful how you do your requests to be sure that um, you're not breaking things. So for that particular namespace, there were no tests. So the first request I've done uh, is to actually don't change anything in the um, in the source file, just run the tests and make sure that they pass. So uh, after that, my refactoring that I'll ask Juni to do will be quite safe because now I have this uh, safety layer of unit tests. So that was the first commit. Um, Juni just run all, uh, executed all the functions and uh, added expected output. So after that, in the next iteration, uh, second commit, I asked to remove Selma as an engine to render uh, templates and just <coughs> use uh, plain strings to to do the same. And uh, after a couple iterations, uh, here and there, ch change the tests, uh, change the uh, source code, uh, it worked. And yeah, uh, I was pretty happy with the results and how, we, how the flow worked. So that's the second example for today. And the final one, um, let me go here and uh, do um, a tough right wizard. Uh, so I um, uh, deployed this small application for, uh, re really for my personal needs to learn better the fretboard on the classical guitar. Uh, so I was trying to practice uh, reading reading uh, reading notes um, and uh, here it's really simple it just shows you the uh, the notation and then it asks you to pick the note 
and then it asks you to pick the fret on a particular string. So um, I believe it's F uh, and it's first thread on sixth string, um, uh, etc. So just now it's pretty basic. It shows you that you are correct or wrong. If I do something like this, it just try it again. I'll go next. So um, I was thinking how to evolve this app uh, and I definitely need to put some more effort in uh, fixing that, uh, improving that. Uh, one of the ideas I, I got is to add uh, something like a session, so you can start a session and then uh, answer some quiz questions and then uh, stop the session and at the end it will show you your stats, how how much time you spend on average answering question, how, how was the um, how much correct answers, wrong answers, stuff like that. So I tried to do that with um, with Juni. So if you go to um, so here and run npm uh, run dev, um, we'll see the. Uh, I'm already on the try Juni branch, so there'll be changes, and now you can see there's a button here. Uh, to start the session. So if I do this, um, it will show that the session is active right here. Uh, I can stop the session. Then if I uh, answer some questions, so it's uh, C on uh, eighth thread, right? Um, then it's B uh, second thread, stuff like that. So let, let's um, do some mistakes like this, for example. Uh, but it's uh, F on um, um, first threads, right? And then I do the stop session, and I see this um, these statistics. So if you follow it correctly, I made a mistake, but there is no incorrect. Uh, so definitely there are some flaws in the logic. Uh, but overall, I think the result from a single prompt in Juni is quite nice. So compare this plain thing to this. So it kind of understood that you can put a start session button here. It's quite quite nice. So uh, I don't expect good design from that. Um, it's up to a human, I think, to fix that. Uh, but I think the result here is is pretty decent starting point for future improvements, really, because you know, like I have this uh, logic. Uh, it works overall. I just need to go add some proper tests for the um, for the logic, for the correct and correct answers, and after that, I think that it will be almost ready uh, to be shipped. So yeah, um, things like that. Um, I really enjoying Juni. I'm using that quite a lot now. I'm planning to do so and share more experiences later. So if you try Juni, let me know what you think, or if you're willing to try, uh, use it in IntelliJ. I think you need Ultimate version of IntelliJ to use it, unfortunately. And there are some plans um, for different quarters of uh, cloud credits, but um, I think that's how most of the, all the tools working. So that's the case. Um, all right, uh, see you next video. Bye-bye.